Can I be Frank really quick? Hi, I'm Frank. All right, I'm Sean again. That wasn't working out for me. What a weird sight. So being here at Rainier Arms and being the only car who's not an employee, it's really weird. I have to be honest, you guys, this is the first time I've gone to a gun store with full knowledge that I might not like something with the intention of just buying it anyways. Um, Zev fanboys out there, you guys are probably gonna love it. I just couldn't hand over the cash. I, I couldn't do it. Um, it was one of those everything that I thought about the gun. I didn't even have to shoot it. Just holding it, it was... All of my preconceived notions were in fact true. If you like Zev's stuff, if you like their slides, if you like running RMRs on stuff, um, I think you will truly enjoy it. That said, if you like their stuff, and you already have a slide, and you already have a trigger, it's not worth $1,700. It's just not. Um, I'm kind of debating on going back and getting the Daniel Defense. There's a lot of guns <laughs> that I'm mulling over mentally right now, but I'm showing you guys a side of me right now that I don't usually have, and that's the Sean is exercising restraint. That's rare. And the fact that I was so put off by the Zev from my preconceived notions of what it was going to be, that I just, I couldn't do it. So I'm actually doing the responsible thing and trying to think of what to actually grab next. Um, it's not going to be the Zev. You guys aren't going to see it on my channel. Um, those of you who have it and love it, that's great. Me personally, I just, I couldn't do it. Um, you know. For what it is, it's a little too rich for my blood. If the price point was around a thousand bucks, I would have done it without hesitation. But the fact that Agency has their own customized Glock that is right around the same price point of about $2,000. I can honestly say I would rather go agency than I would going with Zev. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, I am getting a gun today. I am getting a gun today. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but it's happening. <laughs> so um, stay tuned. It is now two hours later. Went back and revisited and still sticking with my decision of, nope. Um, if I'm gonna be disappointed by a gun anytime in the near future, it was going to be the Glock 43X. So I picked up a Glock 43X. <laughs> There's a couple of keywords that will always get me to say yes. Number one being Barrett, number two being Desert Tech. Now, those of you who follow me on social media know that I have the M82A1 in full length, and I also have the M107 in full length. What I didn't have was either of them in a CQB, and I say that with air quotes, uh, the 20 inch variant. Now I do. Uh, spent a little more money today than I had anticipated. And on to the Desert Tech thing. Um, I do have the SRSA1 and I have the HTI both my favorite bolt guns ever, in case any of you were ever wondering. Um, but the one that I always kind of wanted was the MDR. And the reason I never got the MDR is because the X95 just did it better, um, hands down. It's my understanding that IWI is releasing the Tavor 7 soon, uh, which is going to be chambered in 7.62. Um, but the MDR did it first. For the first time, I had the opportunity to pick up an MDR in 7.62, and I did. So I picked up the Glock 43X, the Barrett M82A1 CQB, and the Desert Tech MDR in 7.62. So all very exciting things, lots of things to review. 
don't tell my wife she's going to kill me. I'm gonna have to edit this video and do the unboxings and everything else. Um, I don't know. So if I'm doing any of this unboxing in a closet, suffice it to say, uh, I'm just hiding from my wife. I spent a lot of money today. Ooh. I did counter steer with a camera in my hand. Um, so with everything going on right now with Senate and this new proposed assault weapons ban, right now isn't really the time to be frugal with purchasing. So I'm not being frugal. Um, you know, uh, this is stuff that I might not be able to buy in the future. And yeah, buying a third Barrett is kind of a little overboard, but um, it's a CQB model, something that I didn't have, something that I would have wanted, and if there was a ban, it'd be something that I was bummed that I didn't own. Um, same with the MDR. Uh, I would have bought it anyways, ban or not. Again, a lot of assumptions and speculation today. However, uh, Hopefully it runs, and hopefully it runs well. Uh, see how it runs suppressed, and we'll go from there. Here it finally is, the Micro Dynamic Rifle, chambered in 308. So excited about this one. And I'll be honest, this isn't the first time I've unboxed it. I've played with it quite a bit, and I got sick of putting it back together and taking it apart so I could do this review. So I'm just getting it out of the way now. Not setting up any crazy lights. No, just take it as it is for right now, okay? I'm doing what I can. So breaking into the box, just jump right into it, try and get this review slash life vlog done and over with quickly. Interesting take on what they would actually recommend you put on the rail system. That's definitely not what I'm going with, but teach their own. Very detailed and full color manual showing you all of their modularity and amazingness, the ejection system, and all of that craziness. I actually need to read this part because I couldn't figure this out. I didn't try very hard, but um, yeah, I am going to go back through this for a deep cleaning. But obviously, I'm going to get it dirty first. So, one cool thing about this that the Tavor or X95 doesn't have, aside from the fact that this is 308, uh, is the interchangeability of left handed versus right handed ejection and forward ejection, which is also really, really cool. So, with Desert Tech, all of their manuals are perpetually awesome. What else they give us? Warranty and registration card. All of their other stuff showing us their badassness. See, that's kind of what I'm planning. I'm thinking an ACOG kind of has to go on here. If we look at the MDR versus the 17S, I think. It's a really long flash hider. Um, overall, 38 inches versus 26 inches, same barrel length, 8.4 pounds versus 8.2 pounds, so a much shorter, almost exactly the same weight, much better trigger, and much more modular system from the box. So, um, you know, they can, they can tout stuff because they do stuff well. And I have the SRSA1 as well as the HTI. I do not have a covert, which is a bit different of a chassis. Um, this is a good comparison between the M82A1 and the HTI in 50 cal. Um, I also have it in 408 Shytac, which is probably my favorite cartridge of all time. So, them just showing off the other cool stuff that they have. And, and breaking into the rifle system, we get an 80 inch pound T handle along with the appropriate bit. Very, very helpful. And this is obviously going to be a torque wrench as well. Um, not sure why they would also include this, but we have a non-torque wrench tool. Handguard. 
I'm actually going to start popping pins out now. Captive for the win. Here is our receiver assembly. And you can see the little spring catch there where you'd be able to pull this off and flip it to the other side to change your ejection port. And this tiny little thing is your ejection port. So your brass comes out that way and down. Super neat, like it a lot. Um, AMB charging handles, well, we'll go over the features in just a second after I get everything assembled again. So I'm gonna set this out and that out. And our barrel and gas assembly. And call this out. And I'll be honest, this is the last time it's going in that damn box. Really love the detail that they go into in their weapon systems. Just that extra little bit of touch. Um, obviously this is an adjustable gas block. This is a 1 in 10 twist barrel. Which... Eh. Eh. It's good. I wish it was 1 in 8, if I'm being completely honest, but that's just me. Um, there's that. So... Let's assemble this really quick. Actually, before we do, let's break into the actual internals of this rifle itself. And to do that, we have three takedown pins, one here, here, and here. And I'm just using this T-handle. Not too concerned about scratching anything because it's going to be scratched. Not too concerned about scratching anything because it's going to be scratched up anyways. Um, I beat all of my rifles to death. I kind of just get it out of the way so when it happens in the field, running steel or something, it's not that big of a deal and my heart isn't too broken. Relatively simple design. Um, it looks like there's a lot going on, but the main meat of what you're seeing is the locking and the torque system for the barrel. Um, it is a really, really simple design. On top of it being simple, it's also really, really smart. Um, so you have a 7075 outer shell with steel liners on the inside, and it's super skeletonized, as you can see, so it's super lightweight, or as lightweight as could be possible. And a good shot of that flat dark earth, which, in my opinion, looks just as good as the 17S. And our fire control group which is back here, which is acted upon by this trigger bar. And our trigger assembly up here. I'll show you guys that in action. So I'm covering my hammer. So. Pretty simple. So. Getting all of this back together, I've actually found that contrary to what you would think of putting this front pin in first and then swinging everything together, actually I'm going to try it and see if I can make it work this time because it seems like this should be the way that you would do it. Um, so all this gets pushed back in and it actually looks like it's going to line up for me this time. Okay, so I guess the secret here is pushing down on the buttstock while pushing in. Good to know. And then your middle pin, being the last one, goes through. Now for assembly of the barrel, bring the charging handle to the rear, and just like an MP5, you can lock the bolt back by lifting up on the charging handle, so we're going to go down and pull back. And then barrel assembly drops into place. And you can tell that everything is actually in place by the Picatinny rail actually lining up. It's on the side where it says lock and unlock. While holding the barrel down in place so it's head spaced, we're going to turn this to the lock position. And then these two rear allens, we're going to tighten and tighten and go back and forth. 
applying equal force until you get your click. So that's 80 inch pounds. Now it's actually locked. So all of that's together, plus some new dog hair. And then we take our hand guard. And before I do it on accident, I'm going to let the bolt forward. And the pin's out of the hand guard. And slide everything together, giving a firm push. And push it through. Boom. Now the question that was on my mind when I first saw the MDR is what mag is it going to take? Thankfully, the SR25 mag. There you go. So, SR25 mag, that is a good thing. So, mag release. We have one here. And we have one on the other side. And if you are used to the Tavor, there's also one there, should you decide to use that. I don't know why you would. This is going to be our bolt catch. Um, cool thing about this is you don't actually really need that. So let's pretend that we were, and we are obviously empty. Um, so you drop your mag. Let's pretend that we put a fresh mag in, slap it forward. Um, but on the X95, you have no way of locking your bolt to the rear um, unless you put an empty mag in or somehow like you got to reach in and yank down on your little lever. On this, you can literally just draw the bolt back and lift up and it's locked open. Or obviously just try and act upon the bolt with an empty mag. So bolt goes to the rear. And again, here's your release. Now, something worth noting, this is a non-reciprocating handle. Thank you very, very much. So, this stays forward, and unlike the scar, there's nothing there to catch your finger on to stop the weapon from going into battery. So, overall, pretty cool just initially. How is the trigger? Well, first of all, let's make sure that the weapon's clear. Goofy little thing. Okay, I see an empty bolt. Can you guys see it? Maybe, actually. I was going to assume you couldn't, but um, it is very, very easy to see. The first knock that I'm going to give this rifle is the fact that in order to check your chamber, not only do you have to look basically the opposite way that you would think, um, and other people probably wouldn't know where to look, but further than that, where is the muzzle right now? Yeah. It's kind of pointed at my, well, not at my face, but it's damn near it. So, um, one thing to consider. So, we are clear. And let's feel that trigger. So, selector, very nice and positive. Reset. Break. Reset. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Break. Reset, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. So, it is, for a bullpup, an incredibly, incredibly well done trigger. Um, I'm going to say... Uh, I'm going to say it's right around... Five and a half, maybe six pounds. So it definitely is a combat trigger. Not a precision trigger like in the SRSA1 or the HTI. So if you're used to that from Desert Tech, you're not going to find it on this rifle. However, for all of their purposes, it's incredible. So size-wise, how does this compare to the X95? There you go. So the X95 is actually a bit longer. Um, in my opinion, not nearly as comfortable. So you can see the X95 has about the same length of pull 
magazine location is very similar. Um, weight wise, I'm going to say they're actually relatively close. Mm, I'm actually going to give a nod. Ooh, that's a tough call. Um, you guys know me, I don't ever break out of scale, but um, they are really, really close. One thing I'm going to give the X95, and it didn't come with one, but if you guys have an X95, this is an absolute must. I did a video on how to install it. The Geisley Lightning Bow and Trigger Pack. Well, let me show you the best trigger you're ever going to find in a bullpup. Right? Now yeah, wait for it. It doesn't get better than that. It just does not get better than that. Watch again. The fact that an X95, a bullpup, can have <laughs> a match grade worthy trigger is just phenomenal. Again, this is the Geisley Lightning Bow and their trigger pack, but just watch. There's my reset. Just absolute perfection. Now compare that again to So, this trigger feels terrible in comparison, however, all things bullpup, this trigger is pretty phenomenal. Um, so, Geisley just does everything incredible, and they're literally the only triggers I run on anything. Um, I'm just going to reach behind me and grab my work gun, because I am actually getting ready to go out the door soon here. I'll make this weapon clear really quick. Reset. First stage. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Break. Reset. Take up. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Break. So, further proof, you guys. Geisley is just the way to go with everything. By the way, um, Strike Industries. Um, they made the stabilizer for the MCX slash MPX, and I love it. Much better than the one that came on it, for whatever that may be worth to you. Um, this is on every one of my rattlers now, and this trigger is in every single one of my MCX slash MPX platforms. So anyways, enough ranting about the amazingness of the trigger in the Tavor. Um, maybe one of these days Geisley will come out with something for the MDR. That would be a dream come true, because all things considered, um, the X95 is going to shoot better just simply for the fact that it has that much better of a trigger. So as I'm sitting here looking at these, I actually kind of want to throw an EOTech on top of... I'll be right back. So here they are side by side you can see that the X95 is in fact longer. And they are actually both 18 inch barrels. This is the 18 inch variant of the X95. And there they are with the EOTEX. That EOTEX does actually look pretty good on there, if I do say so myself. I'm actually gonna probably leave this on there until I can get my hands on another ACOG, uh, specifically with a 308 BDC. So anyways guys, this is the Desert Tech MDR. As always guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or the like, leave them down below. And I'll see you in the next one.